All right, guys, here we go. We're going to do this fun, fresh and juicy, tall, cool drink for a lovely spring day. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm here with a fresh and juicy fun drink. This is I'm saying it's pink grapefruit juice with ice cubes in a lovely tall glass with a sweet orange slice. I will be doing this with acrylic gouache. You can use any paint. You can use regular gouache, acrylic gouache, acrylic paint. Works the same. Now I have gone in and put my background on. This was just from the Turner Acryl, Acryl Gouache, it was the sky blue and white, and I just did as three squirts of sky blue and three little squirts of white and brushed it on and let it dry. Then I used the Sorol transfer paper to transfer this design onto the surface. The surface I'm painting on is 140 pound watercolor paper by Arteza. It is 100% acid free and works really well. That's what I've been painting on for the, the last month and I've been enjoying it a lot. And I know that my husband has been using the same paper for the Art Sherpas tutorials for Acrylic April. And this is my tutorial for today, fresh and juicy, day 10 of Acrylic April. Looks like we've got some folks showing up. Thank you so much for hanging out and sharing this journey with me. I am going to be using, I'm not going to be using a lot of blue. I put just a tiny little bit out. I have the permanent yellow deep the permanent lemon yellow, the opera pink, and white. And the opera pink is a fluorescent color, and it, it could fade over time, but since I'm doing this on paper, my main goal with this is to do prints or to make uh, cards, things like that. Bigger posters or something to go into a kitchen or dining room. You know, maybe out in a cabana. It looks like a perfect drink for that. But I'm not planning on selling the painting with the opera pink unless somebody really wanted to buy it, knowing that over time that color could fade just because fluorescents kind of fade. But what they really fade is in the fluorescing ability, their way of interacting with the uh, UV light. So I'm not sure what it will do. It should be fun to see. <laughs> Over time, I will tell you. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into a closer up view. And we will be doing this with a brush. <laughs> We're going to be doing this where I am painting in the background with, I'm going to pretty much paint all of this in the inside of the glass with a very pale pink and then we'll start building up the colors. I might wait on doing the outlining of the highlights until closer to the end even though down here we're not going to be highlighting it with any blue. The blue of the background is the blue you see in that glass. Oh if you're interested in the traceable pattern it is available on my website under the patterns and traceable page. All the links are down below for the materials, the traceables, ways that you can support my channel. Let's get started. <laughs> and oh, and it's really helpful if you guys share the channel. And if you're new here, welcome. Here, I'll even put on the face cam and say, welcome. If you're new here, I'll go ahead and leave that camera up for a little bit. We are... The colors are right here, and to start off with, I am just going to put in the white with just a touch of the pink, that opera pink. There we go. And we're just going to get that on just 
is quick and easy. We're not, we're not making this the final tone. Mostly, we're just doing this so that we can have a base to put the orange on top of and maybe start working our ice cubes in. The Sorol paper is really nice because it is it cleans up with water. So if we end up with any of this looking like it's hanging out, we can just wipe it off with water. By having the dark in the background, it also helps us get some of that, um, oh, I need to switch the view. That's, it's glary. It's too glary. There we go. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for sharing. I really appreciate you sharing and joining me on this journey. Now, the top of this drink could be a little more straight and level. I'm just using the edge of the brush to do that. Now, I know that I am covering right over all the detail for the orange slice and stuff. I can kind of see, because I sort of pushed a little hard, I think. There we go. I need to rotate this so I can get that other edge because I just see that that I push some color outside. And that's one of the reasons why I kept the sky blue close so I can clear up any of those little odd boo-boos that I end up doing. <sighs> it's the day of the computer crash, Sandy. I know you were here when <laughs> I was having a little bit of an issue getting in today. I'm going to see if I can clean up that, that little space right there. I just rinsed out my brush, drying it off, and now I'm going to see if I can just scrub that off. Because this is acrylic, oh, look at that. And there's a little spot up there that got out. Because this is acrylic, the background being already done and dry <laughs> helps us out. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more pink to my to my white and start putting in kind of a little bit darker pink on that outside edge. Start working this in. Start giving it more of a painterly look. This is not going to be photorealistic. But just start getting a little bit more of a tone. Let's see, I need more water, more pink, more white. There we go. That's that's better. I want to be able to get that color in there. There's some ice cubes, so I'm I'm kind of going in a little bit. The ice is actually a bit more white, so I'm going to just give it a few spots where there's sort of a little patch of white inside. See how that's making it look almost like there's ice there. The ice sort of sticks up above. And then get some of that pink going around the edge. Looks a bit a bit darker on this side over here. I am looking at a printout of the reference. This is not as saturated as I'm trying to do and not as saturated as the the reference photo that we have up there. So I'm trying to look more at the reference photo. <laughs> 
excellent. Getting just, you know, just play with your colors. Even if you're not painting something that you, you know, want to show anybody else, the act of painting, choosing colors, lowers your blood pressure. Just smearing paint around lowers your blood blood pressure. And yep, my cup, my glass will grow a little bit as I'm doing things like this because it just ends up, you know, you want to, you want your edges to be kind of clean and straight. So if it grows a little bit, that's okay. Now the orange is going to be going in right against the glass here. So I'm not too worried about this middly bit. We will put a little bit of a highlight around these edges, and it's going to it's going to make the uh, wobbly edges not as apparent. I'm I'm really enjoying how that's looking right now, though. Let's grab a little bit more white, and say we've got a little bit more of that ice cube that's floating around here. It's going to be behind a bit of that orange also, so we don't have to worry too much about making it perfect. Grab a little bit of this pinky white color and put that down here. I'm using the edge of the brush to give me the edges of those ice cubes. And that's working. And then maybe there's a little bit more juice hiding some of those ice cubes. See how we can just get that worked in easy peasy. Now at the base of the cup, base of the glass, there's a little bit of an indication of the back of the glass in there. And it's just using the pink and the color from the background. And really what I'm doing is with this wet brush, I'm kind of cutting through the paint and going all the way to the dry background. Now there's some of that pink is right down here in the stem. I'm still just using that flat, this is a flat half inch snap brush by Princeton. So there we go. And then there's more of that white. All right, yeah, just get the colors out and play, have fun. All right, so I see that there's like a little highlight highlight down in that stem. There's a little bit of a crossways line. And then there is, I have to, uh, nope, not put this in the paint. Silly me. I just needed to flip it over. <laughs> there we go. I have a different, different towel I can use. All right. So what I need to do is look at this and this lighter color line sort of mimics the edge of the bottom of the glass and I'm going to be cleaning it up using a, a thinner brush but since I have this right here for now let's just let's just see what we get what we're getting is something that looks like it has some depth to it <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I think I might go ahead and take my white on my, my half inch snap brush and I'm going to go ahead and just put my line coming straight down from that for the stem of this lovely glass. And it's going to get faded out a little bit as it comes in, but 
I'm going to go ahead and there and start getting just a little bit of something going on there. I, for some reason, I want to have most of the outside of the glass done. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a smaller brush. This is a number two. <laughs> this is a number two round by uh, Silver Brush Company. It's the Ruby Satin Round. And I'm going to use that because I don't have a, a small angle brush right handy. If I did, I would probably use that. So what I'm going to do is just lightly hit the outside of this. Well, looks like I'm gonna bring it a little bit farther around, eh? Then we're going to Actually, what that's doing, that's matching it up on the other side. I'm okay with that. I can bring a little bit more Turn the painting to match the angle that works best for your hand. Getting those colors deeper in makes it so that we can start getting those highlights. I'm going to wet that down just a little bit and because the paint isn't dry yet, I can start moving some of that around just to blur it out a little bit, diffuse the highlight. Ooh, that's, that's doing better. Now this part right here is a little too strong. I think I want to just go ahead and paint that out and try again in a minute. But that part right there was just a little too strong. Get a little bit more white, or a little bit more juicy color going out match up that edge. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's coming along. It's coming along. I'm I'm pretty happy with how we're going. We just need to just need to tighten up a few lines here and there. You know, you don't have to have a perfect representation. Just get some of those lines tightened up. And that makes all the difference. So, I see more of a broad highlight right here. It's where the glass is sticking out farther. But if you go too, too much, you're going to end up pulling through the paint all the way to the background because I'm working wet onto wet here and not letting it dry enough. So we may have to let that sit for a minute <laughs> because I don't want to go too far, but I do want to actually use that to my benefit break break through the pink here just a little for the bottom of the glass into that the, where it's going down into the stem see look at that use what you think might be a um, deficit or a detriment to your benefit the pulling through the color and going all the way to the background is actually working to our benefit right there. Now, I do want to get a bit more juicy juice going to the background in the opposite arc.
needs we need to get that juice going up a little bit higher a little bit darker it's down low in the glass so just smush it around all right I want to go ahead and start working on Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to do this. I want to get a little bit of a highlight right up on that corner. Okay, turn it upside down. Make it easier to view. Wipe the, wipe the water drops that keep showing up on the edge. There we go. See how there's water on that ferrule right there, right there. Just take that off. It's not a continuous line for the highlight on the rim. You just know that there's a continuous line there. It doesn't, you don't have to draw or paint the continuous line. Let's see. I know I keep bouncing around here. It's just... It's kind of like, you know, that squirrel thing. You start seeing seeing a spot where you've got color on your brush already. So I'm just pulling some of that highlight up that edge. And I pulled some of that highlight down here in front. But you leave, there's like a, a margin where you've got that darker that darker pink showing up also. <laughs> this is really turning out quite well right now. We're going to go ahead and start putting in that orange. And to do that, we are going to take some of the permanent yellow deep and a touch of the opera pink. I'm going to make this really pretty juicy orangey color. And I want to go ahead and get my basic shape put in. A little bit more, a little more water. Make sure your paint is flowing. This isn't a spot for a dry brush. We'll be putting some highlight over the top of this. And it will tone it down. But to start off, we're going to get it just painted in. So now I'm just adding some of the permanent lemon to that orange color. And we're going to come in and I am really going to just paint a circle-ish shape. Circle-ish shape. We'll do the detail with a white that has a little bit of the orange in it. <laughs> right now it looks like a crazy, a crazy something. I don't know. It's pretty. All right, so now what I want to do is take, take a different brush. Um, this happens to be a brush that came with my Turner Acryl Gouache. I, when I bought it on Jerry's Artorama, there was a, a free with purchase thing. So keep your eye out. Sometimes those free with purchase things are pretty darn cool. 
So I'm taking white and a bit of that lemon and opera and permanent deep. And we are going to get that pithy area put in. That space, that membrane between the peeling and the orange. So, see how quick that goes in. Boom. <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty, pretty bright right now, isn't it? We'll work it out. We'll work it out. I need a little bit of that in the center. Kind of pulling out where those segments of the orange are. Kind of like a little star working its way around. I think I want a bit more of that orange going on out here. Thin up the the uh, area for that membrane, you know? And it also is a way to start toning it down just a little bit. Remember, this is all behind glass also. So we're gonna be putting highlights over the top of it. Oh, that's such a pretty juicy color. A little bit more of that opera pink into that permanent yellow. Make more of an orangey type of shape, color. It's not perfectly mixed now. But this is giving us that more of an orange, juicy orange slice type of feel. Few little shadows, then there's going to be more highlights. I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you are, please remember to click that like button. And if you're new, subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends. If you're enjoying what you see. And grab more of that bright yellow. So we can put some of those highlights onto that orange also. Since some of this is actually, like I said, going to be behind the glass, we're going to start toning that down just a smidge. It's the farther away bit. That's, that's actually looking really nice and juicy, huh? So let's see, we're gonna need to narrow down that edge out there. So it feels like it's pushed up against the glass and it's pushing away from us now. Maybe bring this edge down just a little bit. You know, you can, you can work on it. You can adjust things, make it feel the way you want it to feel. Maybe I want that peeling to be a little bit thinner right there. And maybe I want that orange to feel like it goes out farther. See? 
Don't be a slave to the reference photo Don't be a, or to the reference picture. The drawing, don't, don't worry about it. If you go off on your own adventure, that's amazing. Yeah, see, it's starting to feel more and more like a, like a real orange back there. A little bit darker. So just grabbing some more of that pink. There's a little bit of dark back here in that part of the orange. As it's falling away from us, maybe that peel. A little bit darker. Just hit those edges. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm really, really excited about this. I'm just strengthening up that edge just a little bit. It looked a little bit too wobbly. Or not wobbly, but loose. Haha, <laughs> when you first saw it, you thought it was a popsicle. You know, last year I did an ice cream bar. <laughs> so, I was trying to, to stay fresh, stay juicy this time, and actually, you know, let's see. Just have fun. I'm just having fun. Let's see. Let's see. Actually, I want some more orange on there. A little bit more bright. This is the permanent yellow deep. I have to be careful. I somehow I got a little bit of that sky blue down next to my permanent yellow deep. So I'm working really hard at not ending up with a yellow deep green. <laughs> and then some of that lemon yellow. Tap that in here and there. We're going to start making that look almost like a highlight going across. where the glass is going to go and sort of blur it out just a little bit. That's looking good. <laughs> sometimes you have to lean away. You have to really, sometimes you should just get up. And since I'm doing this here, I can't really get up. So I'm leaning away and I'm looking at my monitor. Yeah. There we go. There we go. All right. I'm going to hit this with the heat tool really quick uh, to dry this. I want to get the highlights in. And there's a bit of a there's a bit of a reflection right up here. Uh, well, actually, I should do that first. There's a bit of a reflection right up at the, along the top edge of the drink that's a dark orange color. You know, because it's reflecting that orange in the, in the drink. So that's actually running from... I need to keep my hand up out of the paint. So that's running right along this edge here. Right up to the edge of the ice. There's a tiny hit of that color right over here on the inside edge of the glass. There's a little bit of that orangey tone down here in the bottom. And over here in the bottom. Yeah, wow, that's that's actually starting to come together, isn't it? 
little bit, just a little touch on this edge. See, we're starting to wind it, wind down into those, those finer details now. I am going to dry this now, so get my brush clean. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them into the chat box. Or if you're here after the video is over, go ahead and leave me questions in the comment section. If you like this video, make sure to leave me a comment also and just say you like the video. And uh, if there's something that you would like to see more, let me know. But by liking the video and commenting on the video, it helps YouTube know that this video has value and people want to see it. And, you know, that's the only way they'll show it is if people, the few people that I've got, my, my core people, you guys, you're the, the driver for if more people get to see this video or not. You have control. Did you know that? You have a lot of control here. All right, so now I'm going to take a bit of the white and just the tiniest little hint of pink into it. I don't want it to be my brightest white yet. And I'm going to go from the rim of the glass and come down and curve at the bottom. And then we're going to come in, get that wet, and we're going to make that a little bit more sheer by just getting that edge wet. And we're going to pull in See, look at that. Can be a harder up here at the top, but by working it so that it's a little more sheer and it shows the orange slice underneath, that shows the background through the glass up here at the top, that really helps it feel more, feel more round. And this part in here actually disappears almost. So I'm just going to brush it just a little bit, soften that up so you can see the color underneath. This is acrylic. So the colors underneath are dry. They're not going to blend up through. If we were doing this with regular gouache and we were rubbing over it like this, you would be picking up the color from underneath and making it go through. You could still do this technique. You just have to be careful knowing how much you've dried your paint. Making the glare, yes, making the highlight is has always been one of my favorite things also because it's that part that just makes it feel more real. So this edge over here is nice and hard, but this edge coming in towards the middle is much more soft and diffused. Because what's happening is the, the light is hitting this edge and it's falling off as it comes around. Now there's a bit more of a highlight up here on this, this edge. Again, because this side of the glass is hitting, is getting more of the light. And ever so slightly, you see a little hint. I don't know that I'm going to really be able to, to show that effectively, but there's a little bit of light on the top of that orange color. Yeah, that worked. And there's actually just a, just a glimmer of light coming across that rim. So it's much more sheer. You've got that higher highlight there.
Yeah, that's good. That's good. I need to clean up that edge just a smidge. Sharpen it up just a little bit. I'm cleaning off some of that blue also from the from the Sorol paper because I don't really need an, a blue outline right here. And if I have a spot like right up there, there was some white that it ended up on, I may end up taking a little bit of that blue and white. Oh, if I do that, hmm, I'll have to think about that. I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do there because I've really just made a smeared up mess. Sometimes you just have to own it. make it cover a bigger area and, and diffuse it out a little bit more. Okay, so looking at my, my reference here, we've got that darker line around the outside edge. It gets soft and then it blurs out. This is a little too, this is a little too chunky. So we need to soften that out. So it needs to be a little bit pink. Soften it in. Just like that. Yeah, that's, that's making it so it's not so harsh. And now we can bring a bit more of that highlight and so that we have that fine edge of pink right around the outside. And then we can work a little bit of this highlight up and around. Ah. That's making me happy. That's making me happier. A little bit more pink into that. Needs to be a little bit deeper right down here. See, now it's a matter of just refining your colors, getting them to be the tones you want them to be. Take a little bit of pink into that. And I do need to firm up that outside edge. And that's that's the part that's going to be my, my, my trickiest bit. So let's see. I'm going to set that down right on that outside edge and drag your hand down there <laughs> there <laughs> the same with right here on the top edge of that glass We just want it to be a nice sharp edge on the top edge of that glass. I'll have to put back my super bright highlights. Okay, and you know what? I think I'm going to, to make that background have a little bit more interest because it's, it's a little bit boring. <laughs> So I think I'm going to take my big brush, some of that cobalt blue, and my white, and I'm going to just give it a little bit more interest because it doesn't have much going on. And by doing this sort of crisscross stroke very lightly with just a 
touch of paint, it's going to give it a little more texture. It's also going to hide some of those crazy little things that were going on. There we go. You know, some of the little splashes that happened and the little, just the little extra goobers that happen. You know, sometimes things like that happen and knowing how to go in and just give it a little bit of interest. A little bit more blue. I'm going to take it a little bit darker up here in the top corner. So it's not quite so light right next to. The glass. Oh yeah. And then it can just fade off into lighter color going away. But I'm not doing a hard, a hard sharp coloring here. You know, we're just the only place where it needs to be sharp is right there. Right around the edge of the glass. It's the only place it has to be sharp. Every place else, you know, just crisscross strokes. Just Get them nice and blurred in. Last step, I'm going to go ahead and put those bright, bright highlight right there at the top edge. Pull the tape off, sign it, and we'll be done. So, that sharp edge I need to put my brightest highlight. I'm going to take a bit of white. Touch of, I guess there's going to be a touch of blue in it. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this without splashing it all over the place. So, touch, touch, touch actually before I touch. Let's turn it over so I can drag down just ever so lightly. We've got bright highlight, bright highlight, bright highlight. I need more white. <laughs> oh good, I'm glad that you guys like having that little bit more texture into the into the background. It just, it needed a little something. It was just feeling a bit too, too hard or too flat. There, now we're getting that brighter highlight. And a little bit on this edge over here. Hard, bright highlight. This is a liner brush. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a hard line back here, but not over that way. See how there's that harder line here, but as it goes out over the orange, it's not so hard. There's a harder line right here. And that, oh, I just saw that. That little bit of orange that's right here kind of comes up against the glass on the inside of that ice cube. And it sort of shows up right here again against that ice cube on the other side. Just, just little things, little tiny touches, nothing, nothing super huge. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sold on that little bit right there where that orange, I, I got the orange highlight too bright. 
So let's just give it a little bit more of a glass highlight right there. There we go. Sometimes you just throw your brush down and say, hey, let's just see what happens. That feels much better. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sign this puppy, and then we are going to pull the tape off. So I'm going to sign. Yeah, I'll sign over here. I'm signing in blue, so it's the same color as the background pretty much. Just like that. Let's take that tape off and see what we have. Now, you notice I put out way more color than I should have. You don't have to put out so much paint. I mean, and this was just little tiny plops like the size of the end of my finger. So you don't have to do that much. I do have another piece of cardstock or a piece of watercolor paper, I might do another painting with these colors just for myself. <laughs> All right, I need to hit this tape with the heat tool. Just soften the adhesive on the tape. There we go. And then when you pull the tape away, pull it away at a sharp angle from the paper. If you have these little areas that you don't like, you can always paint over them with white gouache or white acrylic paint. I will be using this tape again for another project, so never fear, I'm not being wasteful. I hope you guys had a lot of fun doing this project. I know I did. Get that out of the way. And there we go. A fun, fresh and juicy, lovely drink. Let's turn off that card. Do 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 do. There. So there we go. I really like how this turned out. I hope you do. I hope that you will share this with your friends. Make sure and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you liked best about this painting. Was it adding the extra layer to the background? Was it when I put the highlights in on the glass? What part would you find the most uh, fun to do? Let me know in the comments. And remember to go out, well, Stay in. <laughs> Do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>